so I thought I would uh, do some more work on this piece that I generated in my demo on mark making. <clears throat> I promised to show you how I can use acrylic inks to glaze areas to pull together um, work that seems to be going a lot of different directions. But first what I'd like to do is use one of my favorite tools, PVO Drawing Gum. It's a mask. And I, I like to use it as a kind of um, safeguard, I guess. I'll just put, uh, put some on and it will, it will um, protect some areas from the ink that I'm going to throw on top of it. So, in other words, what is covered with the drawing gum will remain untouched by the ink. And it's just another way of interacting with the surface to create surprising events. So I will just let that dry and then we'll see what happens when we put the ink over it. <clears throat> I really like acrylic inks because they're so intense and they are so uh, transparent. So I think I will choose, one of my favorite ones is Antelope Brown. And I, I'm mainly working in black and white here, though I did collage on this element just to show you how you could use a transfer printed onto to tissue paper, then collaged on. Uh, so it's a little bit sitting there by itself, but we may um, eventually add another element to that. But right now, let's have a look at what happens with the, with the acrylic ink. So really shake it up if you haven't used it for a while. And then what I like to do is just drop it pure onto the surface. And then get a wet brush. Uh, big flat and just drag it over the image. It's very, very intense, and you may not want to leave it at that kind of intensity. You can always um, spray it and lift it while it's wet like this. I'm working on a, just a very um, inexpensive student mixed media paper right now. So it's lifting a little bit, it's not taped down. If it was gessoed, it might have a little bit more um, stiffness. I'm going to just spray a little and lift just to get a little bit of varied intensity in this. And I will dry it. And let's see what happens when we lift the drawing gum. I like to do it with my fingers because I can feel it. But you can also use a special tool, a crepe eraser, that you just pass over the surface and it picks up the drawing gum. So the beauty of this is that it has preserved some lights. Now it does create a certain kind of visual look because it's it's got sharp edges. It's hard to um, create soft edges with drawing gum, but that's okay. It's just one step along the way. run my fingers over to see if there's anywhere that I can still feel it sitting on the surface. It's not good to actually leave on the surface forever. I'm not really sure how it ages. It might not be very archival. But also the point is to lift it to reveal what we've protected underneath. 
there's still a lot of activity here uh, because we have protected a lot of what was underneath and there's a lot of, of activity in the underpainting. But this is where I would often just step aside and think about where I wanted to take this next. The first thing we could do is collage on again some of these some of these uh, more of these brown elements. This is like the palette of a cave painting now. So let's um, get out our matte medium. And this is very this is a very strong element here. It's heavy patterning tends to really um, dominate and it can really flatten and especially when there's a lot of uh, high value contrast here. So I'm just going to bite into that so to speak with some other things. I really like this. And this is almost a different visual language completely. It's kind of um, more organic in form. as opposed to that kind of, the other thing about pattern stencils, um, using stencils and printing, repeating forms as they have a kind of mass produced, almost kind of industrial look, which is, is fine, it's just a, a type of language. So I like to interact with them with more organic kind of shapes. And just, I could cut this, but I like the tearing because of the irregularity of it. I'll just put one more piece on there. Of course, with collage, you get the opportunity to kind of test things out, these compositional elements, try them in a few different places. Ooh, maybe vertical might be nice. There's an interesting vertical element opening up there. So let's see what happens if we put it like that. And I'll just hurry things along by drying. So I may uh, look to some more mark making tools now. Um, I really like the introduction of this brown here. It makes me feel like maybe we need a little bit of some kind of brown line brought in. And then I'm going to start kind of simplifying. So, I always like oil pastel because I like the way that it resists anything that comes on top of it and kind of endures as little bright Spots. So I've got that color. I like this kind of gray stone color, gray green. Now this is creating more activity, which you know some of it's going to be lost, but repeating the kind of linear and and spot circles kind of motif. And there's a little bit of red that kind of popped in there from my transferred uh, print on tissue paper. So I'm going to just throw a little tiny bit of red in, in a couple of places. Okay. The next thing that I might do is get some collage angles or some uh, framing angles and see if anything is emerging as far as corners, composition. I, I kind of like the way it's kind of building in itself into a bit of a circular motif because I like these kinds of corners that it creates. But I'm just going to play with these and see what's emerging. It's still a long way from actually being a functioning composition. But I think what I'll do is start simplifying now and I'll simplify with a couple of colors with ochre and white maybe a little bit of umber too just staying in this earth palette 
So on my a temporary wax paper palette, I'll put a little of each of these colors. Some titanium white. Now we're going to be creating some uh, quietness. So I'm going to reach here for opaques. Make some opaque mixes. Sometimes if you don't feel like you want to go straight into the very opaque titanium white, it can be fun to uh, just try a little bit of uh, painting back a veil with zinc white. So I'll just grab some zinc white. So there's my zinc white, burnt umber. I'll also try Titan Buff because it's such a, it creates an opaque off-white that isn't quite as yellow as the ochre mix. And here's some ochre. So let's try a little bit of zinc white first of all. I'm just going to tentatively start painting out a little bit of the activity with a big flat brush so I can't get too detailed and some, some zinc white. So this center here is very active. I'll paint some of that out. Maybe over here too. What I tend to um, have happen in my mind and in my paintings is that the space starts to divide itself into almost compartments. Uh, with this one, I really like the curvilinear lines. So I'm going to try not to get it too rectilinear. So I think we still could paint back some of these circles. Something's pulling up a little bit. Could be, yeah, I'm not quite sure. It might might be the uh, oil. One of the one of the pastels I used here is pulling up just a little. That's okay. I don't actually mind when char charcoal or pastel pulls up a little bit, but I like to know what it is and why. <laughs> So just using a little bit of zinc white here. Because it's a little less, a little more tentative than the titanium. And you can still see what's what's uh, showing through from underneath. Often when I'm working intuitively, I'll take at various stages, take the painting to a mirror, hold it upside down, turn it round, just so I get better, a better idea of what might be emerging here. All right, I think it's time to create some opaque, so I'll just dry this. I'm going to put my, arrange some of these on my palette, the ochre, yellow ochre. Titan buff. Burnt umber. Okay, and now it's just a matter of Painting out. So I'll make a little mixture of titanium white and ochre. Just 
added a little bit of water to that. So titanium is our most opaque um, paint. So I'm just going to paint out some of this corner here. But I like always scratching into with usually the end of my brush. And this is much, much too busy up here. I like the kind of verticality that's come out in this version here. Uh, I don't know whether it will look the same if I turned it round, but this is what I'm going with right now. Feels like we could bring a white edge up here too. Here's a mix of the uh, white uh, ochre, yellow ochre, and a little bit of umber, just to shift this into a slightly different tone. The umber is quite warm. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. It's quite nice there, I think. I also really like just putting the paint down thinly, spraying, and then lifting or, or braying some of the paint up. And I like this, uh, the <laughs> paper towel you know, puts, lends its impression to these areas in a, in a kind of a nice way, even though we all may recognize it as paper towel. It's still inside the visual language because it's a series of dots, which we have here as well, for instance, here and here, just different kinds of dots. All right, a uh, little bit more white, 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 a whiter white. has still got some umber in it. So I'm really working with a limited palette here, which is really satisfying. I like the limited palette. I like that slight value change of the edge there. I might go down and do that here too. Seems like it got a little bit blocky there, so I'm going to dry it and reintroduce some line to it. The other thing I could do is bring in an ink again, something like Indian yellow or an orange.
I'll try the Indian yellow. This is gonna be very bright. Just so we have that lightness, we don't lose the light value. Because the ink is so transparent. It's a little bit harsh, that yellow. So I'm going to uh, lift it a little. Rub it back a little. It's a little better. I think I'll get one of my other earth tone inks, like a sepia. I actually have a, a red earth, which would be nice. And here's the sepia. But I feel like I need to get a bit more white in here but not with the brush. So I'm going to do some transferring. Take some white, uh, titanium white, and just put it back onto the tissue paper, or the wax paper. I don't want it quite so blocky, so I'm going to transfer it in very specific ways with my palette knife. So I'm marking into it and making these variable bits of white have with a little bit of con more control over it, but still lots of room for surprises. See what happens. I've introduced some white there. Also introduced a new visual language here. So let's put that in a couple more places. And these may get tinted as well. This is many, probably many, many layers um, still to come. Over here could be lightened up. And maybe here too. Sometimes these can be done more than once. Now the contrast, I will turn to the brush now. So we have the white that's very distressed, and let's go back to some blocks of white laid on with the brush. that line a little. Maybe distress this with my finger too. So some shape is starting to emerge now in my mind. Now might be a better time to pick up the framing tools. I feel like this is becoming the core area here. A lot of nice activity out here, but I'm not seeing how it's going to work into the composition. But this is the moment where, you know, with framing tools, you get a chance to look at a lot of different possibilities. And you, it's great to look at corners. What's, what's going on in the corners? I like this line dipping down into there. Yeah, I 
this I think should be better cut into. So this is just a very um, contemplative experience at this point. And I often will continue to tinker for quite a long time in this way. I like what's going on down in here. So maybe this is kind of looking like a focal point because of this yellow and the, you know, the high contrast of values there. So I might turn to a small brush at this point. Sometimes I'll crop the piece down when I once I know. Okay, this is where this is where I be, really want to work. Um, I'm going to actually get a little bit more of the titanium white. A drop of the yellow. You can mix your uh, ink and heavy body paint and fluid paint too, because that's the color. Now I've got a small brush. And I, I'm going to go in and paint positively here. So I'm interacting with this area that was printed. And I'm going to come up in here to maybe make some of my own positive form. I don't want to get too picky, but it, does feel, it did feel like it needed some kind of attention there. I think I'll just use my big brush, actually. Bring that right up. Here. And I'm working around some of the shapes I created with my drawing, my mark making at one point. Bring that right up into this. Distress it. Draw into it. Find other places where it might work. So I'm creating a um, combination of hard edges and soft edges. And this is always the hard part, is going in over all those pieces that you really love. Chinese marker. I feel like I need to break into this area here. So I've got this kind of vertical, these vertical lines moving through here. These markers have got a great feel. Still feels a little like could use some tinting. Something I like to do when I really, um, I don't know, I come to a point where I'm not really sure what to do next and feel like I need a big, big change that doesn't destroy everything completely, is I will do, uh, I'll do, um, uh, just glaze the whole thing with something. 
So I'm going to try this red earth, which is kind of a new color for me. So let's see what happens. It's quite, quite a big color. Get a big brush, wet it. I wasn't really liking that very pale yellow. Now here is the thing. It looks like it's completely gone. What's underneath there? I'm just going to spray some water on and turn this into more of a rubbing. piece of drawing gum still left on there. Let's get that off. You can see how much this would like some white. So that's quite great. I think that's a beautiful color. Um, I'm just going to lift a little bit of the lighter lights back. So while it's wet, we can do that. Kind of pull up some areas that we want to be a little bit lighter. I think that's kind of created a more interesting palette here. again and see what happens with this. Now I'm really liking this activity up in there. So that that's actually really changed it, changed the potentials here. And that nice dark red corner is great. This is a bit uh, heavy. So I think I want to do some bit bite into that in some way. What would be great is another piece of this kind of transfer paper here. So I will work on that and see what happens. So I rummaged around in my collage box and found some warm collage pieces of tissue that I, I think these are stained with inks actually, and I thought they might be fun to add, to create some structure. Yeah, so let's um, try to maybe bite into this area. Some of this jagged stuff, but not all of it. Maybe like that. So I usually don't go too many steps ahead, just one or two. So we'll start with that. And you can see that all kinds of stuff is getting lost underneath. But that's the fun. So it's okay to use um, not this is not acid-free paper, the tissue paper, but I'm printing with light fast pigments, and it's buried. It's going to be buried under um, layers of plastic, basically, which is what the medium is. You can see why it's important not to get too attached to things too early on. For instance, I loved this edge at one point, but 
I think that this is more important to create this layer than to keep that edge. So I might regret it in the end, but that's how it goes. Now this edge I might use for somewhere else. I just tore it off, but it might be nice up here. So the collage papers are both calming areas down and pulling areas together that kind of needed to be quieted down. What about the yellows here? Here's a line that almost echoes some of the lines that we had in the original form. Like here. Down here. So maybe that could come in. Down there. I'm just ripping it up. might even cut this one just to have that different kind of contrast we were talking about. Most of the edges of this are ripped, but what if we actually cut one? I made a sharper line. Into maybe try a red, not a, the, as heavy as the red earth, but a beautiful color called scarlet. See if any of that. So there's a lot of areas that are very, very busy, and I kind of want to tie them together without without destroying them. Let me get a smaller brush. Tentatively try this red. Could be a little strong. So here I have used a, a mask made out of Yupo paper to try to add some opaque to quiet things down and create some shape. I used a combination of titanium white and the um, red earth ink and a little bit of magenta, quinacridone magenta, heavy body paint. So I really like how this is now, this was kind of reading to me in the colors of cave art, maybe because I've been looking at cave art lately, but uh, and now it's kind of almost got a landscape kind of reading and this might be what's underneath. This is just, you know, meaning rushes in, right? It's hard for us not. It's hard for us to keep meaning out of our mind, but um, for me that's you, that usually happens in the latter stages of the painting. There's still a lot of activity here. I don't know exactly where it's going, but I thought I'd do another um, bit of opaque, introduction of opaques 
with maybe using another uh, mask as well. I feel like I need to get some of those light tones back in. So I'm going to look through my masks that I pre-cut. And I could cut more if I like, but maybe there's something here that works. Let's try a couple of these. And maybe, maybe this one. Let's see if I can find some way to create uh, some kind of interaction between, especially this ragged edge of the the uh, tissue paper. It's a very particular language, and I'd like to get in there and actually change that up a little bit. So I'm going to just paint a little bit of it out, but this time with some of these lights, because I like the light in there. This is the Titan buff. Very, very, very neutral. Be a touch of ochre in there. And I like the stuff that's showing through there, so I'm just going to smooth it off with my finger so we don't cover it all up and see what kind of interaction that created. I was kind of speaking to that curve too. almost like light coming up out of there. But because I always like to mess things up, I think I'm going to do that. Just rub a little bit of it back. Because there's some beautiful things going on in there. Okay. And where does that take us next? 